Various subjects of Denmark, assemble! Teuton, Sweden, Riga, Novgorod, Norway, Brandenburg. That's pretty much it. But for just 8,000 likes, we'll be doing Norway. No way! And establishing a true American empire. In 1444, Denmark is one of the strongest nations on the map. You start with two personal unions over the nation of Sweden and Norway, as well as you have Holstein as a vassal. And as consequence, you can have up to 20 land for its limit. Plus, you have a pretty decent economy there is one problem you have some pretender rebels in one of your province in Gotland and because of that we have to get rid of them first having these pretenders means that if we give out all three of the plus one mana privileges then we're gonna get really bad debuffs so we're just gonna give two of these for now including the supremacy over the crown as well as the patronage of the arts we're gonna give the diplo one after we've killed off the rebels and we can actually see some crownlands rival wise I recommend the Teutonic order Scotland is a great rival as well and even the nation of Novgorod can be a super good rival if we're lucky we might be able to get some lands in Novgorod before they get completely wiped out by the Muscovites so in order to do that we're gonna right click on our nation go to diplomatic feedback and then we're gonna have all of the provinces adjacent to the Swedish border as provinces of vital interest this way our PU member of Sweden is gonna start getting claims on these provinces and once we have these claims we can attack Novgorod ourselves our main focus however is going to be the nation of uh, the Livonian order we can start getting a claim on them and you can get some permanent claims on Osel and Estonia once you have 90% of your naval force limit so we're going to build a few barks set your starting ships to protect trade in the Lubeck trade node and we're going to actually wait for these peasants to come on over to the province of Gonji and we will be fighting them in Gonji not over here if we do a naval landing in this province considering we only have 10 transports we can only ship on over 10 units at a time and that means we're gonna have slim chances of actually winning this. I actually recommend that you delete the forts in Kolding and the fort in Lund. You can keep if you want the fort in your capital of Shayland. The reality is that if you have a decent fleet, no one's gonna be able to get onto your main fort in Shayland. And having the adjacent forts is basically a liability in case things go south fast. We're also gonna delete the fort in Gotland of course after we get control of it again. Since we cannot really sell titles anymore, I recommend and you go for the indebted to the burgers loans which is five loans of one percent interest so you're only paying 0.27 interest for these loans and with the 300 ducats you can get proper advisors as well as you can recruit the free company in the province of Shailan so we can use the free company to kill off these rebels once they land in Gonji alliance wise it's your choice and if you do get alliances in the HRE I recommend that you go for the holy roman electors take note though you only have four diplo relation slots so don't don't get too many allies if you cannot handle it. I recommend getting more allies after you integrate the uh, nation of Holstein. To be fair, you really don't need that many allies either because you are a pretty strong nation onto yourself. And with the amount of troops that your personal union members have, you don't even need to worry about alliances. Just remember to get relations with uh, the nation of Holstein because you need 190 relations to start integrating them in uh, 1454. We also got a royal marriage with the uh, leader of Brandenburg. Right now, we do have a few other nations that have our dynasty predominantly the Palatinate and all three of the Bavarian minor nations so after Bavaria is unified if that happens you can technically claim the throne if you're lucky enough similarly you can do that with the Palatinate but of course it is super RNG and because we had our troops waiting for their separatists to come over in this province we got the defender advantage and they got minus one terrain so it should be a fairly easy fight especially since we have considerably more troops than they do Daria go now we can just completely wipe them out. Arrivederci pretender boy. And we're gonna use our mercenary company in order to siege down the province of Gotland. The Bavarian inheritance happened giving us plus eight yearly tax income. Feels rich man. You also will get a few other flavor events such as the state of Denmark that gives you minus one crownlands and 133 ducats but you will have to fight some rebels in exchange. So make sure that you position your troops in these provinces before you click the button. This way your troops will have a better chance at winning these engagements noise 
If you're also struggling with your PUs that they're a little bit too disloyal, you can always just enable support loyalists or honestly just improving relations most of the times does the trick as well. And we also have gotten the Baltic fleet, so now we got all of the claims on uh, the juicy Livonian lands. So we're going to set up our troops and attack them once we finish the Siege of Gotland. All right, Gotland is ours. That means we can give out this privilege for the Diplo plus one mana points. And after we can seize Zekron, lands got a few rebels not a big deal though we can just easily deal with them now oh looks like muscovy just attacked the nation of novgorod and i got my claims on them because of my subjects actually getting the claim on cola so you know what i'm gonna change plans a little bit i'm actually gonna attack the nation of novgorod instead if i'm lucky i might even be able to take the northern parts of this nation before the muscovites do i'm gonna assign objectives for my pu members to assault this nation also i guess it's time for a little bit of uh splitsies with the Russians. We wiped out their navy, but sadly we didn't capture any ships. I was really hoping I can get some trade ships from them, but yeah, feels bad, man. At least we got the siege here, so regardless of the outcome, we do have roughly 50% war score because they only have the two forts in Novgorod and Lucky, so even if the Russians get the other fort there, we have enough war score to peace out with the stuff that we want from this war. Kind of feel bad that I didn't manage to get these provinces in uh, Olonets and Soroka because that would have looked a lot better. Now it's just gonna look like Muscovy has more land than me, and I'm not happy with that. I want to look like I have more land. I want my name to be bigger, okay? That's what it's all about in this game at the end of the day. Actually, can we just peace out without chasing down the army? We can actually peace out without the army. We would not be able to take Novgorod, though. But then again, if I do take Novgorod, that's a guarantee that the Muscovites are going to attack me. Right now, they're actually friendly towards me, and I kind of need the rest of the aggressive expansion here in order to uh, get all of the stuff in the Livonian lands. So I'll let the Muscovites get Novgorod. I'm even going to be able to get an alliance with them now Daria go oh no they hate me now never mind they hate me because they want in German land fair enough gonna have to improve relations with them then let's go by the border with the Livonian order and we're even a great power now and from taking all these lands we got up to nine percent crown lands which is really not bad now let's go for the big boy over here we're not cobligerating the Teutons or Riga because they have their own alliance sets and we don't want to have to fight half of Europe for these lands set Narwa as the target since we're right next to them and let's go once more give out orders to our PUs and subjects and try and get naval supremacy by killing off their ships. Together with the ships from uh, Norway and Sweden, we really do have like twice as many ships as everybody else in the Baltic. So navally speaking, this shouldn't be any sort of an issue. Oh, come on, Muscovy. I was actually improving relations with you and you seriously rival me? Bro, come on. That's horrible. I should have taken Novgorod in that case. I was really hoping to get good relations with you so I can focus on the West, but now I guess plans change then I'm gonna have to morph into Russia myself. Reval is uh, no more. Probably the worst Estonian accent ever, but hey, at least I tried, right? All right, we took out the entire Livonian army. Now the thing is, they still have quite a few troops and we gotta siege down this fort as well. Let's also try and get as many of their provinces since uh, that's gonna prevent them from recovering their army and better yet, rebuilding their army. And we are sieging down Osul. We'll probably try and make our way from Osul to Goldingen as well. Last jousting turn tournament should definitely come in handy and we even got 25 diplo from our beloved vassal holston actually looks like they're actually marching away from us so they're pretty scared i guess gonna also wipe out their entire fleet here after i take the province oh boy the big army coming towards us come on boys we gotta siege these faster all right we got the siege in fiefland so let's go over to riga now we might have to merge all of our troops over from riga and let Galland in order to fight this they got another 10k coming as well yeah definitely we're gonna have to to do that now let's bring these boys over to let galen we have to prioritize the fort as having the fort prevents them from coming into the northern provinces completely oh lol that's so cute brandenburg actually wants to join us oh sure thing brandenburg i don't really need you but i don't mind you as a distraction for the teutonic actually come on let's get these guys before the reinforcements arrive yep we got them. the rebels took this fort however so we got to take that back now oh we got burgundian inheritance already and austria got all of this stuff oh dude that's so messed up that's gonna be a really strong austria now and because i didn't pay attention i actually sent half of my low morale troops ahead of the main army and they got completely stacked up so be careful when you manage your armies boys as expected though they are focusing on brandenburg now that i called them in and they even wipe out the uh brandenburgian army or most of it anyway oh bro seriously i either lose the core on schleswig or i take the province and i get bad relations i mean this is a little bit of a no-brainer because i have a core not a claim 
game on Schleswig. So I'm afraid I'm just gonna have some bad relations with Holstein, sadly. No way around it, boyos. No way around it. Hey, we even managed to get Riga now. I think I'm gonna actually make Riga my vassal. I did not co them, but I'm still gonna make them my vassal. Because having them as a vassal means that I'm actually gonna get a lot more trade power in the Baltic node. Obviously, the Baltic node and the Beck node are my main true nodes. I will have to make sure that they're loyal and I'm gonna have to ask to divert trade also after they are a little bit more loyal. So it's time to improve relations again. Did they have any troops anywhere? They did not have any troops. Okay. Was hoping I can use some of their troops in the war as well. Whoa! Hello? I got a PU over Brandenburg? What? Dude, this is the luckiest freaking PU I've ever freaking seen. <laughs> So now I start with three PUs and two vassals from 1452, man. That's actually insane. Because I have two vassals, I can actually give out the uh, strong duchies privilege. You need to have two vassals, not PUs, to give out this privilege, which offers two extra diplo relations, as well as liberty desire reduction in your subjects. So because of that, Sweden's at 1% now. I think there was an achievement for like having a few PUs. There is. It's at Wix Legacy. Have 10 PUs. Okay. Okay, that's quite a few of them. But if you guys are interested, let's say for 10,000 likes, we can get this achievement in this run. And since this is becoming quite juicy, I'll make the save available for all of my Patreons. Link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Let's also not kill off our entire manpower pool by holding the entire army there. And maybe we can even barrage this? Oh, come on. Seriously, they gave me unconditional surrender. So that means I have to actually piece out the Teutons now. Otherwise, I'm going to get a lot of freaking war exhaustion. Really, dude? I really want to get some money from the Teutons. You know what? Screw it. I'm actually going to just siege this down and just get the money from taking Königsberg. That should be enough to get 25% war score. This is seriously ramping up right now. I'm going to use some Diplo power to lower that a little bit. We're at minus seven, so maybe we get it in a couple of months. Come on, boys. 14%. Nope. Didn't get it. 28. Come to Papa. No, no. Again, no. 35. Uh oh, for frack's sake. Come on. Really? Please? 35 too? Okay, we got it at 35 second time because is it's normal, right? Am I right? God damn it, I hate this game. We managed to get three war exhaustion from this. Oh god. But hey, look at this. Now we can get 25% war score. Can we get a little bit more even? 250 ducats is basically enough to fuel our economy after this war is over so we can actually properly recover. And we're gonna fully annex the nation of the uh, Livonian order. Only Novgorod would go into a coalition against us. So clearly nothing we need to be worried about. Let's concentratio and core up everything here. Means we can also expand Expand Zidane's and Conquest of Ossol, which offers us claims on the uh, Teutonic lands over here. Or better yet, Danzig and Riga, which is already a vassal of ours. Danzig probably will not be able to get since we have a five years, seven years truce. And by that point, the Danzig event should trigger and they will likely be under Polish control. I'm going to keep the fort in Latgalia, but I'm deleting the one in Reval because it's uh, a grasslands fort. So it's really not a good fort. Let's also make Bohemia our rival considering that we have the uh, Brandenburgians as our junior member, Bohemia is really not that far away from us. And look at this, guys. Because we have the well-connected trade for our leader, as well as the privileges that offer reduction for advisors, they only cost 50% of the regular price. Literally 0.59 ducats per month. I thought that my union with Brandenburg is weird, but then I saw that München is under a union with Hungary for some reason. So I got no idea how this happened. Also, Hungary is already ruled by Janos Huniadi and his son Matthias Corvinus or Matthias Huniadi. So Hungary is definitely going to be a massive powerhouse in the central parts of Europe. They even already snaked massively into the Balkans as it is. Meanwhile, in Western Europe, I have a few questions. Obviously, the HRE went for the option where they divided the Burgundians and now there's like a hundred little schnitzel countries around here. But then the big question is, how did the English get so brave to actually attack an HRE nation. They're literally attacking half of the HRE. Look at this. Oh, I think I see why. It's because Austria, the emperor, does not have strong allies. They got Palatinate, Papal States, Landshut, and Ragusa. This is the weakest alliance set I've ever seen an emperor have. They would be willing to ally me. No, thank you, sir. Wait a second. This province is actually called Karen? What? I kind of feel like I want to return it to Novgorod now. I'm just joking. I'm not going to return it Rod. Hello, Prussian Confederacy. Holy mother of God, they got more than half of the country, so two 
Pokemons are 100% gonna get completely wiped out by the uh, nation of Danzig, Poland's future vassal. Speaking of, Muscovy just integrated a few of its vassals and it's starting to look very scary, not gonna lie. We also got our truce finished with these boys, so let's actually attack them, take the rest of the lands that uh, they actually have before the Muscovites do, because they also have their truce finishing in four years from now. By that point, they're gonna be Danish lands. Hmm, nous avons la renaissance avec Chilon. Oui, oui. You know what, guys? I'm actually thinking about something very seriously right now. So I know I took a lot of lands from Novgorod, but the thing is... I was gonna fully annex them like this, right? However, I could vassalize them instead, and I can feed them back all the cores that they have on Muscovy. So I can cancel the cores they have on me. It's only two extra cores that they have on me that I cannot cancel. So technically, it's actually bull. Get their money as well, and just use them in my war against the Muscovites now. Hopefully, we can piece them out now that we took all of their provinces. And yes, they are utterly defeated. So let's go with our brand new vassalin, Buyashnakabu, and my troops are stuck there i literally forgot to bring my troops back oh my dear lord now i'm gonna chill for a little bit and i'm gonna see if i can actually get any more personal unions we still have quite a few von vittles box around palatinat still von vittles box and it's not that hard getting a royal marriage with them either problem is they do have a decent heir meanwhile landshut also has a decent heir as does ingolstadt but that does not mean that at some point they might not lose these guys so i'm actually gonna improve relations with them also after i finish improving with my current vassals and uh, PU members. Look at this, boys. Level 3 trade efficiency advisor only cost me 2.76 ducats. Let me actually make them all level 2 and 3. And I still have a positive income, even though I have level 2 and 3 advisors. And by the way, by taking the province of Novgorod, I prevent the nation of Muscovy from forming Russia. So that significantly weakens them. And they are kind of hard-coded to take this province. So I could even potentially wait for them to attack me. Albeit, I will be the one doing the attacking, not to fear. Personally, I think the best feeling in EO4 is whenever you're lowering autonomy. It just gives me a feeling of joy inside. Oh, no freaking way. They actually let Teutons keep one province? Bro. Bro, no freaking way. Oh my god, this is insane. I'm actually gonna vassalize them. Can I diplo vassalize them? I am really close to diplo vassalizing them. The big problem is the trust and my diplo reputation. Let's just try to improve relations with them and maybe even if it doesn't work, of course, attack them and take the province. But I'm really gonna do my best to get this diplomatically. I think it is doable and I don't have to fight Hungary and uh, Scotland for this. Okay, seriously, what's happening in this game? Austria just sold provinces to tell you What? Are they really doing that badly economically? Seriously? And of course, Picardy got all of the Normandy lands from the English. That kind of tells me that the English are pretty weak now. Is Gascony? Gascony's independent. No way. Wow, France is going to have such a free game now, man. For that matter, even Scotland could technically have a pretty free game now. And what was I saying? Step one, boys. Step one, we can get the alliance with these guys. And we are significantly closer to actually diplomatically vassalizing them now. So I got another round of 1% interest loans so I can actually embrace renaissance and as such actually get cheaper technology here. We got our first idea set unlocked. I'm gonna go for quantity ideas first and hear me out here. You might be wondering, but Ludi, you got so many subjects. Why are you going for quantity ideas? Well, I am gonna get a massive surplus of military power in the early game. And if I choose to go for an admin idea, it prevents me from getting admin tech 7 faster. If I go for a diplo idea, I'm already behind with Diplo technology and I also am struggling because I have used a lot of Diplo points for unjustified demands overall. But that being said, a second idea set, I will be going for influence ideas which offers 25% Diplo annexation cost reduction. So because I'll get the second, it's going to be roughly around the 1490s when I unlock the third idea here. And that's also around the time that I can start integrating Sweden and Norway. So it's going to be 25% cheaper to integrate integrate both of those and after influence ideas depending on the situation I can go either economic if I want to play tall religious if I want to go on a massive crusade in the east and against the various Protestant nations that will appear or even exploration if I want to go in the new 
world since after integrating Norway, I will have Iceland and it's going to be pretty easy to start colonizing the North American continent. You might also be wondering why am I getting curry favors with the small and significant nation of the Teutons? There's two reasons. First off, it actually gives me 0.5 favors per month because it's relative to the size and I am obviously way bigger than they are and my army is a lot stronger. So I'm getting a ton of favors per year. Because of that, I'm going to use the favors to actually increase the trust that they have with me. Remember that the reason they were not accepting diplo vassalization was because they had bad trust minus 32. Now it's minus 22 so I can diplo vassalize them because of this. I do need 190 relations with them so I'm also going to give them military access that offers me another 10. I'm going to also send them a gift that improves the relations by 25 as well. Proclaim guarantee them also and the last step is to actually just influence the nation but I have to pay off my loans first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell some of my titles. This is going to give me a lot of money and it's going to let me pay off my loans and afterwards I'm going to use this to influence this nation and there you go we can now vassalize them noise and we can use them to get all of these cores back from the poles afterwards without getting much of aggressive expansion and let's face it in the early part of the game the aggressive expansion is the biggest problem who would have expected a nation like Denmark to have six various vassals all of which are actually significantly strong 8,000 likes for the Norway guide 10,000 if you want to see the achievement and check out this awesome video until the next time and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members Patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support